Hello, I am back with another honest review. Finally, this time it's going to be the smallest project I've ever reviewed, whose governance token is not even yet sellable, but it's obtainable anyway. As usual in my review, I'm gonna dive into the team behind the project, I'm gonna dive into the white paper, I'm gonna dive into the community, and of course, I'm gonna have my critical points. Well, does it deserve your attention? That's a question that many of you ask ourselves. Let me help you find the answer. What is TST? The standard token TST is the native governance token of the standard protocol. The standard protocol aims to become the next generation over collateralized stablecoin protocol backed by rare assets. Those assets will include not only cryptocurrencies, but also physical commodities, including gold and silver. The commodities will be placed in the smart vaults, which allows the user to mint the stablecoins, such as S-Euro. Moreover, you can borrow against your assets at fixed 0% interest rate. And now, let's have a look at the people building the protocol. The project is founded by Joshua Shigala and Anna Verdes. So let's have a look at them. Josh is the father of the Standard Project and I was fortunate enough to have him on my podcast. This gave me a great opportunity to ask the founder questions directly, understanding more about him. I'm one of the, those guys in the beginning of, of Bitcoin that uh, was ranting and raving at everyone and no one listened. That, that's basically me. Josh strikes me as visionary. Uh, this technology will keep on getting better. If Bitcoin is the first incarnation of this and someone comes out with a competing currency, well, it might be, might have learnt from Bitcoin. But trust me, Bitcoin is sticking around just like BitTorrent has. With strong appetite for building in the finance space. And I built the world's first swap site where people could swap clothes back and forth. He has media background. I was actually working at a, at a television station as head of 3D animation and discovered and, Bitcoin in 2010. And in 2010, you know, I saw the Satoshi's white paper and I, I just fell off the back of my chair. Consequently lost fortune in the uh, Mount Gox collapse. I lost a lot of money in the Mount Gox collapse, more than anyone wants to imagine. And that inspired him to found his own exchange, Volt Oro. Instead of trading against fiat, I was like, let's price it in gold. Let's have a rare assets. Let's have a rare metal versus rare numbers. So people could trade in an order book against gold sitting in a Zurich uh, high security Swiss vaulting facility um, that was fully insured, fully audited. So no bank account can do that. After Vault Oro, Josh apparently didn't like Terra Luna's white paper. And I thought this is a nightmare because me coming from an economics background, I like to back things. And decided to work on his own stablecoin protocol, which brings us to standard. We really want to deliver asset-backed currencies. The other co-founder, Anna Voldes, has um, hotels and economics background and also a background as an English teacher. To her credit, she has an immersive resume with seven years of association with Vault Toro. During that time, she has held numerous positions. Additionally, Philip, Joshua's brother, is part of the project as an advisor, rising it to a family level undertaking. To understand more about the project, I think we should go deep into its white paper. In this section, I'm going to review the standards white paper. It was about 30 pages long, rather newbie friendly, easy to read, overall easy to digest. Let's start. So standard stablecoins are asset backed, meaning that underlying assets are locked in the smart vault. The assets are either tangible and intangible, so the crypto assets and also physical ones. It begins with S Euro, the standard Euro, which is already obtainable today by the way, but the other major fiat currencies will follow, including the USD, Yen, Ruble and others. As Euro is being launched in stages, IBCO is the first one. It stands for Initial Bonding Curve Offering. It works as follows. First, you have to obtain the S Euro. Then, together with USDC, 
you can choose to bond it and get TST tokens in exchange. We'll talk about TST tokens later. But by doing this, by bonding, you provide liquidity into the DAO treasury, which is something that lots of the failed stablecoins projects lacked. Finally, the last launch stage, which is the top priority at the moment, is the launch of private smart vaults, which will enable you to collateralize your crypto and gold. Physical gold, I mean. And wow, that is quite huge. The paper consequently dives into the use cases underlying the fact that stablecoin market cap grew staggering 200 times from 2017 to 2021 alone. Stablecoins are like a big part of the of the crypto market, but it's still like under 10 percent. So, you know, there's I, I think there's a still like a huge um, room to improve and a lot more are coming on. But also what you were mentioning before about like the race, right? So we have got to start sprinting. Regarding the use cases, many are obvious, such as generating staking income and protecting against inflation. But the biggest use case is presumably attracting new DeFi customers, customers that own physical precious metals. And DeFi has been so far out of reach for them. And with the current market cap of gold at 12.6 trillion, I think there is quite quite a few people that will want to borrow against their gold and enjoy the DeFi advantages. So how exactly does the locking in physical gold work in real? Well, you will need to do so in a top tier vaulting facility connecting to the smart vault. There will also be, uh, of course, auditing with the uh, recognized auditing firm, but also by audited by the standard DAO appointed auditors. Wow. I hope to get appointed so I can travel the world and see loads of gold. There are three types of fees in standard. Minting fees for minting the coins, then storage fees paid to the custodian of the particular smart vault to cover the storage expenses and lastly the emergency stability fees inspired by the maker soft peg mechanism. Emergency fees are normally 0% but in the case that the coins fall considerably below their peg the, the fees will increase and that will force the users to pay back their loans and increase the circulating supply thus hiring the pack. Another interesting feature is automatic collateral swap. Just in the case that your small vault collateral faces potential liquidation. As an example, you can have you can set the option that your Bitcoin that you use as a collateral is gonna be swapped for stable coins just in the case that you face a liquidation. In this case you will lock your collateral at a lower value but you will also avoid liquidation. If the smart vault's collateral still falls below liquidation level, sadly you will lose your collateral, in which case it goes to auction. And that is offered to the TST stakers. And since we've mentioned TST quite a few times, uh, let's have a look at the token in detail. TST is the utility token of the standard protocol with governance and staking possibilities. The governance includes decision making over, for instance, veto right on stability fees or new features or even emergency shutdown, which is again inspired by Maker's Dice feature. And it's something that happens in a case of serious block swan when the whole network is in danger, for instance, internet disruption. The network can essentially be frozen. Supply is capped at 1 billion tokens and there is currently around 100 million in circulation. So that's about 10% of that. I am not able to find the release schedule as of yet. I'm a big fan of like incentivizing the community as well to, mm -hmm. and early adopters and early users and stuff like that. We we want the release schedule to be very um, even and not just dump it on the market. We want feedback from the community, mm -hmm. um, how that should happen. I normally do a little bit of the technical analysis at the stage of review, 
but not today because TST is not yet sellable and thus doesn't have a price history. But you can get it for about 5.5 cents when you bond your S Euro and USDCs into their IBCOs, initial bonding curve offering, which is by the way innovative way of how to get underlying liquidity to launch the stablecoins, arguably way fairer way than ICOs are. Or you can get TST for random price in the unofficial sushi swap pool, but bear in mind that the total liquidity of the pool is just $800. However, once the smart vaults are done, the unofficial pool will be launched. We will set the initial price at um, the five point whatever, but it could very quickly shift uh, down as people want to like maybe take profits, but it could very easily shift up from there too. Well, last but not least, there was a good update by Josh on the current development. So we're looking to release the Smart Vaults um, end of February. Now, saying that, this is the MVP, the minimal viable product mm -hmm. of the Smart Vaults. So it's, um, it's the core functions. Looking at the fact that the audits are still due, I can't see the vaults being done in Q1 of this year. Also sad fact is that some of the core team members had to be laid down to protect the smooth running of the project in the case that the crypto goes further down. So that was all information available about the TST token, but how much will it really be worth later this year once it finally comes to market? Well, the community brings the value. So let's see if it's any strong. As per usual, I have researched the project's community by interacting with it. The standard is so far the smallest market cap project I ever worked on, with a potential market cap of only below 6 million. That is less than Numbers Protocol or even less than Cell Frame. Yet, the amount of feedback and activity my drafted review invoked was superior to those of numbers or cell frame. The community's Discord is well structured, with about 200 online users at any point of time. The standard also has Twitter with 11,000 followers, Telegram with 7,000 members. What's missing for me the most is Reddit. Please make one. GitHub is with 16 repositories, although there is very little activity in most. What's really nice to see is that Josh is present everywhere, responding and being an open book. If your community does have uh, advice for us, we're still a young project and you want to get into something, come across to us, join us and, uh, and help out and uh, give your advice. The community feels very much alive and given the depression in the market, that's quite rare. Still. I need to say a few critical words. When evaluating projects, the key question to ask ourselves is what's the team's track record? They did build Wall Toro, but why haven't we ever heard about it before? Presumably because the fees associated with real gold ownership are just too large and people are just not interested, not yet anyway, in such a service. And it begs the question, is the narrative of physical commodity backed stablecoins also perhaps too ahead of time? Will people be interested in it today? Because it's safe to say that the physical backing will also be associated with high running and storage costs. As with every other project I have reviewed, also the standard is very ambitious. Can the team pull off their ambitions? If they do, the standard stablecoins might be one of the most resilient and even apocalypse resistant stablecoins in a crypto space. Thank you for having a look at my review and I would like to invite you to watch one more. Just click here. This one is a review about small layer one called Laxo, but might not be small anymore because they are in the middle of releasing their mainnet as we speak. Just have a look at them.